Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to read an ECG of a patient of atrial fibrillation. Okay, so uh, I have taken this picture from learntheheart.com. I have not checked their website out, but uh, I think it would be worth it to go and check their website out. So uh, let's talk about this male patient, a 35 year old male patient who is a known alcoholic who has developed sudden onset of palpitation followed by syncope. So this patient, uh, while he was binge drinking, following a recent episode of binge drinking, he developed palpitation followed by syncope and is now presenting to you on your emergency, on your casualty. Okay, this, has, this patient has presented on your emergency. So what does the history of this patient tell me is that this patient is an alcoholic. So there definitely might be some structural abnormalities in this patient's heart for example a dilated cardiomyopathy which could be expected of uh, of a cal al of an alcoholic patient so there might be certain structural abnormalities in the heart of this patient which might be causing certain rhythm problems in this patient okay that is my thought process right now now on examination examination findings have not been given to you directly this question gives you an ecg finding so whenever you get an ecg please don't get overwhelmed by all of the lines okay so you if you take it systematically it would be very easy so whenever we read an ecg we always look at the rate of the is like rate of the heart rate of the patient we try to find it out from the ecg tracing we try to look at the rhythm of the patient rhythm of the patient's heart then we look at patient's heart sorry we then try to look at look at the axis of the ecg so that we can find out if there is a left uh, left left uh, if the left side of the heart is enlarged or the right side of the heart is enlarged that is basically no, known as left axis deviation or right axis deviation then we try to look at the p wave the pr sorry the pr interval the q wave the qrs complex the st segment the t wave and so on okay so this is how we have to approach an ecg okay and if you go through this approach every time uh, you'll definitely be able to answer most of the questions given that you know the concept you have at least practiced it a uh, hundred times so you'll definitely be able to uh, you know it comes by second nature okay the more you practice it will come by second nature so let's to, uh, let's look at the rate of the patient now i'm not going to uh, teach you how to calculate the rate of a uh, rate heart rate based on an ecg but basically we calc we calculate the number of large boxes between r waves and we divide 300 by that number but the problem here is if you look at the ecg itself the distance between two r waves is is variable and even if you calculate it so let me do that in um, the lead two okay rhythm strip of this patient so let's say uh, there are one two and three large boxes between these two r waves there is one two and two and a half large boxes between these two r waves again one and a half two three so three and a half large boxes between these two r waves just two r just two large boxes between two these two r waves again let's say two point uh, two five large boxes between these two r waves so it's so variable so it's not it's not constant in a normal patient the, the distance between two r waves should be constant it should be constant this is variable in this ecg so what does this tell you this tells us that the patient has an irregular heart rate but can you predict the irregularity is there any pattern to this irregularity sometimes it is three sometimes there are 2.5 boxes sometimes there are 3.5 boxes between sometimes uh, uh, from 3.5 it directly decreased to two boxes then again there's 2.25 boxes again there are two boxes M maybe there are 3.5 boxes so there is no pattern 
to this irregularity therefore this type of rhythm is known as irregularly irregular rhythm so whenever there is an irregularly irregular rhythm you will not be able to calculate the the uh, heart rate just by dividing uh, 300 with the number of large boxes between any two rr waves okay because the distance between two rr waves is variable you, what number would you use to divide so you can write that the rate cannot be calculated why the rate could not be estimated the rate could not be estimated why and this is generally like there 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 are ways to determine heart rate of patients in atrial fibrillation that is true but this is this video is focused on trying to teach you how to uh, identify uh, an ecg of atrial fib a patient of atrial fibrillation in an exam scenario let's say in uh, a viva scenario or in a spotter scenario okay so you may not have all the time to calculate everything so you can just write that the rate could not be estimated why because the rhythm is irregularly irregularly irregular the rhythm is irregularly irregular now look at the axis of the patient to look at the axis of the patient again i'm not going to teach you how to look at the axis of the patient but we look at two electrodes the lead one sorry not the electrodes the two leads the lead one and lead avf so here the r wave is positive more positive than the s wave and here the s wave uh, sorry r wave is again more positive than the s wave so this is a normal axis there's no axis deviation so this is a normal axis ecg there's no axial deviation again i'm not going to teach you how to uh, calculate the axis in this video let's look at the p wave now a common rookie mistake i would say is to call this a p wave okay generally when we start so what we assume is any ecg must have a p wave any ecg must have a qrs complex any ecg must have a t wave okay that does not happen why why is this not a p wave if you if you are thinking that this is a p wave you are wrong because this is not a p wave but a t wave why the reason is p wave is defined as the first positive deflection in an, in an ecg and the first negative deflection following a p wave is the q wave the the positive deflection following a q wave is the r wave so the first negative deflection following uh, following the p wave let's assume there was a p wave would be the q wave the first positive deflection following a q wave is the r wave and the negative deflection following the r wave is an s wave then the positive deflection following an s wave is the the first positive deflection following an s wave is the t wave the heart also needs to repolarize right so 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 there there must be a, a t wave always right so basically the the first positive deflection following the s wave is actually a t wave you can also identify it by the height criteria of p waves and t waves so generally what is said is t wave should be less than 5 mm in limb leads and less than 10 mm in chest leads if it is more than 5 then we call it tall t waves right so there are other different causes of tall t waves and p wave should normally be less than 2.5 mm in vertical height okay and i think you also know that one small box one small box of ecg strip its height is 1 mm also equals to 1 millivolt and it's uh length it's horizontal length it actually corresponds to this is also 1 mm but it corresponds to 40 milliseconds okay one small box this box right here one small box it corresponds to 1 mm 1 mm in vertical height and 40 milliseconds in length okay so this is something uh, that I, i i hope you know even if you didn't know now you know okay so can you see a p wave then can you count the number of boxes that this wave uh, has has covered so if this is the baseline there is one one small box two small box three small box okay again you make a baseline there is one small box two small boxes three small boxes so it's definitely not a p wave okay because in 
lead 2 is a limb lead so in limb leads t waves are less than 5 millimeters but p wave is less than 2.5 millimeters right so it's definitely more than 2.5 millimeters so this is not a p wave this is actually a t wave so i think this is i think i believe this is the most important thing or the second most important thing after the uh but after identifying the irregular rhythm of the patient uh, that a, uh, that a student should be able to identify differentiate p wave from t wave okay so so that means there is no p wave at all instead of p wave there are squiggly lines only and this makes sense because in atrial fibrillation in atrial fibrillation if this is the left atrium there are multiple ectopic foci that fire that fire electrical activity into the av node which also suppresses the electrical activity of sa node so sa nodal tracing is not it's it's not possible for the ecg machine to 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 trace the sa nodal uh, impulses because uh, the electrical impulses are going haywire in the atria because of all of these multiple ectopic foci these are known as multiple ectopic foci so all of these electrical impulses they make squiggly lines they don't make um, uh, any particular characteristic wave so you'll not be able to see a p wave okay you'll not be able to see a p wave instead you'll see squiggly lines like these okay you'll see squiggly lines like these squiggly lines like these okay so um, that is another finding in uh, an ecg of atrial fibrillation followed the the squiggly lines would follow with a normal qrs okay so you will not be able to define a p wave okay not defined pr interval would you be able to define the pr interval or measure the pr interval no because you don't have a distinct p wave so it is not cannot be estimated now other things would be normal because there's no reason for them to be abnormal in atrial fibrillation q wave normally it is it should be one box one small box in length as well as in duration so it's normal q wave is normal qrs complex would be normal st segment would definitely be normal and t wave would also be normal we have already calculated t wave but i'm just writing this assuming that there are, there's nothing else wrong with this patient with atrial fibrillation so what are the characteristic findings the first thing is an irregularly irregular rhythm normal axis would be there and the p wave would not be present and it would not be defined so this is how you read the ecg of of a patient with atrial fibrillation i hope you enjoyed this video i am hoping that you learned something from this video if you did please consider leaving a like um, in this video and also if you have any questions you can drop it in the comment box below if you have any feedback for me you can drop it in the comment box below if you think that um, this video could help your friends please consider sharing it with your friends and uh, it, it would really help if you would subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching this video have a great day